Hi, my name is Matt Landsberg with Eric Finn, Custom Clothiers, and we're talking about how to buy a suit and have a suit and shirt fit properly. Specifically now, we're going to talk about how uh, a shirt should fit, how it should be worn, uh, and a lot of the detail aspects of, of shirt and tie and how it all comes together. In this case, we'll start off with the collar. Now, Bryce has a fairly narrow face, so to best offset that, and again, go back to create an illusion, you want a wider spread collar. For somebody who has a narrower face, it's ideal to have a slimmer collar. Uh, when you have a wider collar, as Bryce does, you want a fairly large knot that fills up that space well. When you have a slimmer collar spread, you want a, uh, a narrower collar. The other thing about collars uh, to keep in mind if you're buying a collar is you can get them fused or non-fused. Now, most shirts off the rack are fused because it's quicker to do, it's easier in the manufacturing process, um, but there are pros and cons to both. A lot of guys are really interested in co comfort, especially around the neck. In this case, Bryce has on a non-fused collar, which is great. It's going to be more comfortable and it's less stiff, uh, but the downside is, as you can see, there's just a fine wrinkle there and you've really got to stay on your dry cleaner to get that pressed out very well. Uh, whereas on the flip side, a fused collar is, uh, is, doesn't wrinkle as easily, but again, it's very stiff. A lot of times I see a guy running out of, of, uh, of the office or wherever, getting, going to work, and the tie is going to be too short. This is uh, an important detail, especially if you're in business, is to get the tie length just right. In this case, you can see the tie goes right to the top of the belt buckle. That's perfect. If it's too short, you know, you're going to look like a clown. And I see a lot of guys, old professors and such, where the tie was too long. So that's important. When you're tying the knot, make sure that the length of the tie goes right to the top of the belt buckle. The other thing we'll mention is cufflinks. So I'll show a few uh, specifics of cufflinks, how to apply them, and, and what to look for when buying uh, cufflinks. Now here you can see I've got a, uh, two cufflinks uh, built slightly differently. This one here is a little bit less expensive and it does not have a hinge here. So you can see it's fairly fixed. Uh, the downside of that is, is it doesn't have the same mobility. If you accidentally drop it, step on it, something like that, you're, gonna, you're probably going to break it. Whereas this one here has a little bit of, it has a hinge built in, and so you've got some flexibility. It's, it's a bit more durable and probably won't break because it's not welded. You don't have that, that point that's welded closed. As far as putting a cuff link in on a French cuff shirt, Typically when you've got a French cuff shirt, it's going to come too long like this. What you want to going to do is fold it in half or fold the, the cuff up, as Bryce is doing here. And now you can put the cuff link through. So once it's folded, you've got four buttonholes that should all be lined up. Take your cuff link and just put it through each individual, each individual hole. like so. It's usually pretty easy when you've got somebody else to do it for you. And so that's how it's going to look when it's finished. One minor detail you want to notice as well is you're going to want to button the placket button. A lot of people overlook that. Another thing that people don't necessarily know when they've got a shirt with a pocket, now of course this one doesn't have a pocket, but if you do have a pocket, the most you ever want to put in your pocket is, well you can put business cards or anything flat but the most you want to put in is a single pin and that's going to be to the centermost part of the body. So if you have a, a pin and the pocket spreads here, you're going to want to put it to the most center aspect of the body uh, to look professional. Otherwise, you've heard about professors with their pocket protectors and 101 different pieces of uh, things in their pocket. This is how it's done properly. Next, we're going to talk about what to look for in a quality suit. To watch the other segments in this video series or for how-to videos on almost any other topic, visit monkeysee.com.